All right, welcome. We're looking at the TMJ and the oral cavity. So there's a couple of things we can see uh, on this model. Uh, and th we're lucky with this one. All the only muscles it has on it are the muscles of mastication. So we're looking at temporalis here, the masseter here. We can just, in this little gap here, in the mandibular notch here, we can see the lateral pterygoid muscle there. And then if we just turn the skull, so we're looking at a more posterior view, here's the medial pterygoid muscle here. And if we look just above that, there's the lateral pterygoid again there. So that's where we can see the two pterygoid muscles. Now on this model also, we can see the articular disc of the TMJ just here. So that's pretty handy as well, articular disc right there. But that's pretty much it for that model. So let's then have a look some of those same structures are on a different model. And this model is much larger, so we better just zoom out a little bit. But this model being large, brilliant uh, for being able to see things you know, in detail. Again, here we have the masseter and part of temporalis here. And if we just gently remove the masseter, we can see where temporalis is attaching here onto the coronoid process. And again, in the mandibular notch, we can see the lateral pterygoid muscle there with very horizontal fibres. Now if we then turn this head again, so we're looking at a more posterior point of view, here we can see the medial pterygoid muscle. And if we keep going, oh beautiful, there we can see again the lateral pterygoid muscle there. So they're pretty clear on this being such a big model, pretty easy to spot those structures there. Now then, we can also uh, find on this model, again, the articular disc of the temporomandibular joint. So here it is sitting in the mandibular fossa. Remember, there'll be a cavity just inferior to it, another one just above it. That's the articular disc of the temporomandibular joint. So that's what we can see on that model. Now then, let's just have a quick look at a skull. And here we've got, gee, it doesn't look small after looking at the other one. Here we've got a plastic skull. And on this one, it's nice to kind of zoom in pretty close. We're looking at the temporomandibular joint here. If we just gently dislocate the joint, we can see the mandibular fossa here. We've got an articular tubicle here, anterior to it. So there's our articular tubicle anterior to it. And then here's our post glenoid tubicle. Sorry, probably best if we can see it really, isn't it? Sorry about that. Here's the mandibular fossa up in here. And so this bump here at the back of it is the post glenoid tubicle there on the temporal bone itself there. So there it is, just there. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. And then, oh sorry, well, well we've got that one we can actually just quickly, because it's, of course, it's a skull, um, we can quickly just have a, a look at the teeth here. So we've got incisors. So we've got a central incisor and a lateral incisor. Then a canine, first premolar, second premolar, first molar, second molar, third molar. So those, we can find all of those there course, on, on any skull, it has all the adult teeth. Okay, let's then have a look at this model. So a mid-sagittal section of a head here. And so if we're looking here, you know, we can see the nasal cavity up here. We can see the oral cavity proper here. And then we can see the vestibule just here. So between the lips and the teeth, is the vestibule just there. On this model, we can also see the apex of the tongue just here. Genioglossus, this large muscle belly here, makes up a lot of the bulk of the tongue. We can see the lingual tonsil here, the base of the tongue, the palatine tonsil here in the oropharynx. We can then also see that this whole structure here is the palate. 
So this part here that's made up of a couple of bones that hopefully you already know and love, that's the hard palate. So if that whole structure was pinned, that would be hard palate. If this whole structure was pinned, that would be soft palate. But if just this last little bit here was pinned, that would be the uvula. So hard palate, soft palate, whole thing. Uvula, just this bottom bit here. Right, uh, so that's what was of interest to us on that model. Now we have another one, and this one's another enlarged one that's really quite brilliant. So we're looking here down on the inferior part of the mouth from a superior point of view. Obviously, we can see the tongue. So again, we've got the apex of the tongue here. We probably, if we just gently remove the tongue, uh, can oh no, we won't worry. Oh, actually, we will worry about one thing on the inferior aspect of the tongue there's the lingual frenulum so that ridge in the middle under the tongue is the lingual frenulum all right having got the tongue out of the way again now we can see some teeth so we've got a central incisor lateral incisor canine first premolar second premolar first molar second molar third molar so again we've got all the teeth there what we can also see inside the mouth here though here is a sublingual salivary gland and you can see all the little openings all the little openings of the sublingual salivary gland ducts you can see the ducts here and then you can see the openings here so remember the sublingual gland has a lot of ducts uh, and so that's what we could see on that model but we can also see if we turn this one over uh, a submandibular salivary gland here under the body of the mandible or inferior to the body of the mandible and again we have another model now where we can see some of those structures so here again we have this fine little model of a, a mid-sagittal view again of the uh, the head so again nasal cavity up here <coughs> again we can see genioglossus here making up a lot of the bulk of the tongue we can see the apex of the tongue we can see the vestibule of the mouth and then the oral cavity proper. We've got hard palate, soft palate, uh, being this whole bit here, and then the uvula being this bit just here. If we gently remove the tongue here, we can see, uh, maybe not as amazingly clearly as on the previous model, but we can see here a sublingual salivary gland. Let's just zoom in, get a bit of a closer look. Ah, oh, that's a bit better. So here we've got a sub lingual salivary gland and here just under it we have a sub mandibular salivary gland so that one is actually visible from this point of view we can actually see it from this medial point of view uh, and we can also see the palatine tonsil here number 14 and if we turn this model over and look from an external point of view a lateral point of view here we can see again the sub mandibular salivary gland here